Welcome, ladies, mentlerchen, and other people of the YouTube. My name is Voltevit Tony, and today I will be showing off my very own personal semi-manual brewing station. So, let us begin. You might be wondering, why is this device semi-manual? And the answer is simple. The ingredients of the brewing stand, and by extension this hopper, have to be placed in manually, i.e. by hand. Whereas the bottles down here, which aren't technically part of the brewing process, they're refilled completely automatically. Hence the term semi-manual. Next, let us build this device. In this chest is everything you will need to complete it. We have dispenser, two redstone torches, a trap door, five hoppers, a dropper, two repeaters, two comparators, three redstone dust, two barrels, one brewing stand, a water bucket, a sign. The smooth stone represents building blocks. The sandstone represents filler blocks. The blaze powder is fuel for your brewing stand. And the glass bottles are what hold your potions. Let's get started with the facade. Place down a brewing stand. Now we're going to add the line for the fuel. Place a hopper to the side and a barrel above it. And you can insert your blaze powder right now if you want. Next, the line for the ingredients. And because they're manual, it's just a single hopper. Next up, let's place a hopper on the side. This will be where our filled bottles go. Now we'll need to place a trap door above this hopper to act as the waterlogged block or as the water source, to be more precise. A temporary block here with a trap door on its face will do just fine. Now before we waterlock this block, we need to finish building the rest first. So to put a temporary block here and a dispenser facing our water source. Then we'll need a hopper running into the dispenser, a dropper running up into the hopper, a hopper into the dropper, and then finally, a barrel. Now this might seem a little bit convoluted, but this was the best way I could come up with to make this look a bit nicer. Now you can put your glass bottles in if you want to. As a final step, we'll waterlog this trap door and we have our water source. Now one thing I recommend doing is placing a sign in front of this trap door, because as you can see, if we accidentally open it, water spills out and that might be undesirable. Now the water doesn't spill out. That completes the front of the device. Now let's work on the rear. Next to this hopper that supplies the brewing stand with bottles, place a block. Out of this block, we take a comparator output. This detects if there is anything, or in our case more importantly, if there is nothing inside of this hopper. The comparator then runs into a block, and behind the block is a redstone dust. Now let's build the redstone clock, which is activated by this dust. Place a block here, with a torch running out of it. This torch powers a block above it, and a repeater takes output from that block. Set the repeater to 3 ticks delay. This repeater then powers the block, which powers the redstone below, and that gets the clock running. Now don't worry, this clock won't run all the time. We'll set up logic that stops it when the machine doesn't have to fill any more water bottles. Take a repeater output from the redstone clock, and by placing a block next to the dropper and dispenser, we can now power them using this redstone dust. As you can see, our dispenser was busy filling water bottles and throwing them out into the hopper and filling the brewing stand. Now there is one edge case we have to account for. What if this dispenser runs out of water bottles? Well, in that case, let's take a dis uh, comparator output from this dropper, feed it into a block. We'll put a torch on the side to invert the output. In other words, the torch is on when the dispenser is empty, and we simply need a redstone dust running into the side of this block. 
This will permanently light the redstone clock and thus disable it. All right, let's look at an example use case scenario. In my inventory, I have the ingredients to craft and potion of invisibility with extra duration and the splash powder variant. So I'll put the first ingredient inside the brewing stand to get it going. And so I don't have to hold on to the rest. I'll put all of the other ingredients inside this hopper. Now we just have to wait for this potion to finish brewing. All right, our splash potion of invisibility with duration of eight minutes is completed. As we take this potion out into our inventory, as you can see, the device starts refilling water bottles completely automatically. The only thing we will ever have to do is restock glass bottles in the case that it runs out. Finally, let's take a look at the edge case scenario I mentioned earlier. The device hasn't been refilled with water bottles, so the dispenser doesn't have enough items to refill the brewing stand when the next set of potions are removed. I'll simulate this now. As you can see, the brewing stand remains underfilled. However, this dispenser isn't continuously ticking, trying to fire out nothing. This is because of this little circuit in the back we constructed. It permanently activates the clock, which also stops it. Now in order to get the device working again, when you refill your glass bottles, refill all but one. We will need this one glass bottle to prime the system. Just place it directly into the dispenser, and you should see it start working again. This concludes the tutorial for my very own personal semi-manual brewing station. I hope you like the design and find it a nice convenient way of not having to fill water bottles. Thanks for watching, I'll see you on the next tutorial Tuesday.